We are approaching winter, you want to stay warm, you don't know if you're going to go with a wet suit or a dry suit. Today we're going to talk about it. Let's go. Thanks so much for joining us. Today we have an exciting video. We're going to talk about winter riding and how to stay warm. But first, check out Wingfold Pro Center. It's our shop. And if you enjoy our video and you want to support us, go check it out. We really appreciate your support there. But let's get into it. Today, we are going to talk about wet suit versus dry suit for the winter, pros and cons. And hopefully, we can help you make your choice this winter. I've been riding in the winter in Idaho a few years back because now I actually went with another option, which is going to a warmer place in the winter. But if you are stuck in a in a cold place or if you enjoy being in a cold place in the winter we're going to talk about how to stay warm so first let's 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 define the kind of condition we are talking about where you are even to the point in my opinion where it's worth it to consider a dry suit we are talking very cold maybe sub freezing temperature um, where where there's barely any people out but you are motivated you want to go out uh, at that point Maybe even a five millimeter wetsuit might not be enough, and so you're gonna need uh, thicker than that. So, my assumption was always six millimeter, six millimeters wetsuit is gonna be so stiff, you're not gonna be able to move, it's not gonna feel good. And, and to me, that has changed. Now, I use the Soros Guru Plus uh, 654, and that really keeps me warm for sure, and I keep my range of motion. So, when I am pumping to get up, um, if I'm going surfing and I'm like moving my arms a lot, I don't get my shoulders tired. I keep my range of motion and I love it. The wetsuit, actually, what I love about it is it keeps me warm throughout my entire session, whether I'm like not working very hard or whether I'm working hard. So as you increase in intensity, if you are hot, you're going to start sweating, then you chill a bit and then, you know, you're still going to stay warm because that's how the wetsuit acts it's insulation if you sweat it's no problem it's meant to have water inside and that water is actually uh, staying warm so it keeps your body temperature warm so to me you know once you have your uh, booties your gloves your wetsuit your hood I stay warm and I absolutely love it I have been spending quite some time on a dry suit and the dry suit, I would say, is really good if you are going to have um, pretty consistent um, effort. So you are not going to work hard and you are not going to chill. It's going to be pretty consistent so you can layer up because the, the dry suit is not insulated. It's not going to keep you warm in, on its own. You kind of have to think about it like going skiing. What are you, how many layers are you uh, wearing under? The good thing about it is you can layer up or layer down depending on how cold it is that day. But... The downside of it is if you don't do that correctly, you might get cold, you might get hot, and with a dry suit, if you get too hot and you start sweating, and now you are not working as hard, now you are wet inside your dry suit because of you, you sweat, and that, then you get cold. So that's the, the, the trickiest part about the dry suit um, is monitoring uh, your effort and more, like, making sure that you have the proper layers so you stay warm. The, the risk that everybody knows when you are going foiling, you fall and you would puncture your dry suit. And of course, at that point, it's kind of game over. If you have water coming in, you are going to get cold. So hopefully you are not way out there and you can come back safely. I don't think if you do puncture your, wet suit, your dry suit, the water is not going to rush inside. You're going to get some water, you might get cold but you should be able to make it back. But always just don't go very far if you are with your dry suit, in my opinion. There is a rule out there for winter riding, which is like the rule of 100. If the air temperature and the, the, the water temperature is below 100 altogether, you should really consider, am I gonna go out? Make sure you have people with you in case something wrong happens. It gets a lot more serious when you, you start below the 100 when you add the water temperature and the air temperature. Of course, whether you go with dry suit or wet suit, one of the most challenging uh, thing is gonna be your feet, your, your, your hands, 
Um, I love the, 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 the gloves that I've been using with Soros. Uh, I will put the link below. Um, but there is many options out there. You just have to uh, check it out. I have the, I like the three finger, one finger, one thumb. Um, it kind of like still gives you good um, mobility, uh, but it keeps like some of the fingers together to stay warm. So in terms of bodies, how thick are you going to go? I always like to go as thin as I can go to stay warm, just because if you get really thick bodies, you start not feeling the burn. It, the, the riding doesn't feel as good. So I feel like five millimeters is about the max I want to wear. Um, I know there are eight millimeters out there, but at that point, you don't even know where you put your feet on the burn. Um, so five millimeters is as, um, as far as I'm going to go for bodies. With the dry suit, when you fall, do you take on water? Uh, that's a question we often get with the seal. As long as you have bodies that cover your seal, gloves that cover your seal and your hood that cover the seal, you can really crash hard and you probably won't get any water in. Um, if you do wear the dry suit with nothing covering your seal uh, and you fall in the water, crash hard, you, do, you might get some water uh, coming in. One downside of the dry suit, of course, is you are not going to look the coolest out there and people are going to make fun of you, so be ready for that. It, it does look a bit more baggy. You are going to look a lot cooler if you have a wet suit, but if you don't care about that, then you know you can pick either way. Um, that's, that's totally fine. But for me, at the end of the day, having been riding both um, options, I tend to now go for the wet suit just because I keep my range of motion, That's, that was my main worry, and it keeps me warm whether I'm working hard or I'm just chilling throughout my entire session. I've been in situations where I'm in my dry suit and I, it's really cold, I lay, I lay up like crazy, but the wind gets light, I have to work hard, I start sweating, and then slowly um, the, the, the cold starts creeping in because I've been sweating and I'm wet inside. So overall, I feel like the wet suit is going to be more consistent with your body temperature. That's my takeaway. Both options are really great. Now, the dry suit is always going to be more expensive. The wet suit is cheaper. So that's something to consider as well. Um, so that's it. Ultimately, the Soros Guru Plus 654 is the one that I end up riding now in the winter. If you want to check it out, we have it at the shop. I actually met the guys from Soros really uh, awesome people, a company from France, maybe that's why I'm a bit biased, uh, but they make great products. Um, they try to be as eco-friendly as they can, knowing that the wetsuit industry is ultimately not the best uh, for the planet. So if you can make choices that support um, your belief and your values, that's amazing. And I feel like to me, I really resonate with, with what Soros is doing. So check out wingfoilprocenter.com if you want to check out my favorite winter setup. On that note, get out there, winter or summer. The goal is to go, to be out there and have fun, share your session with your friends. And if you are cold, it's not that fun. So you have to stay warm. And I hope you are going to stay warm with all of the tips from today. We'll see you guys next week.